Awesome. Thanks very much, Shay. And great to have uh, Shay and Karen uh, chairing the sessions for us. Um, yeah, really good to have WERF involved. Uh, so I'm giving a little native fisheries management overview of all the things that we're all contributing to bring this native fish revival along, which uh, we've heard a little bit about from Cam already this morning. Wait for this to click. There we go. So if you've been looking at social media lately or some of the fishing reports uh, that come out from trallies and around the place, you've probably seen lots of photos like this. So John Cahill with a beautiful big Murray cod from Lake Yildon. There's Shay with a, uh, a nice cod out of Kudjua Creek prior to the fires. There's Shay's husband and son with a lovely yalla from Lake Hume. So there's people catching fish of a lifetime like these big Murray cod, more Murray cod than we've seen uh, in our lifetimes really. Um, big fish, happy smiley faces like this. There's Karen's husband Justin and her beautiful girls with a nice yellow from the Loddon. Uh, people are catching silver perch, Sam Consolo's daughter with a cracking silver perch out of a stock dam. There's Anthony McGrath and his daughter with a lovely trout cod out of the Ovens River. It's a whole heap of species. Gus Deer with the Australian bass and his mates down in Gippsland. People are catching estuary perch. And if Travis and Dallas are catching native fish, I think we're on to a good thing. <laughs> and native fish are really coming back. We're seeing this through all the photos, through the reports. Um, everyone you talk to, they're saying native fishing's getting better and better, C certainly since the 70s and the 80s. It's not just the photos that are telling us this story as well, it's our fisheries monitoring that we do with the Arthur Isler Institute, electrofishing the river systems and looking for our native fish. We're seeing these real increases in native fish right across the board, particularly Murray cod and golden perch, but a whole heap of other species as well. And we can confidently say that our populations are good, very good, they're improving and they're recovering. We're seeing big increases in our lakes. So this is a study that we did at Lake Yildon where we looked at the number of Murray cod and there's been an 81% increase in the number of fish just in five years. So we're nearly doubling the population of Murray cod there. And generally the feedback that we're getting from you uh, out and about is that Murray cod fishing is, is as good as it's been in living memory, certainly since the 70s and the 80s. There's more native fish getting caught around the state um, than what we've seen for a long time and across a whole heap of different species, not just Murray cod and golden perch, but bass and estuary perch and blackfish and catfish, uh, trout cod and silver perch. And the community love for Murray cod is obviously really strong uh, and for native fish as well. And I don't know what says that any better than 350 people together today when we've got a global pandemic on. You know, we really love our native fish and things are looking up. So my talk today is about all the things that we are doing, not just in government, but in the community to bring back our native fisheries, particularly in the last few years. So the big three that I think uh, most people understand, the real pillars that are making a big difference here are native fish stocking, uh, regulation, so managing fishing effort, but also providing opportunities for people to go fishing, and habitat restoration. And then there's a whole heap of other things, which I call the one percenters, like CAMS one percenters, but they're actually worth a lot more than that. And they're all contributing to bringing back our native fish. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, the big one, native fish stocking, increased native fish stocking. As you've heard, and uh, as you're probably aware, our systems are really modified. So they're modified for irrigation purposes. We've got dams and weirs across the state. And our water doesn't flow like it would have in the past. And because of that, our native fish don't always breed like they used to. They don't get the cues to breed and they can't move around. So we do need to stock our native fish in many places if we're going to have fish populations. Um, the government and the community have been doing this for a long time, but we're in a really good spot right now where we're stocking more fish than we've ever done before. So we can put more fish into more places and be really smart about it as well and use some good technology and research to get the best out of it. So this year we are stocking 6.68 million native fish right across the state. And this is uh, a record number of fish and it sounds like a big number. When, when you break it down though across the species, 
we're talking well over two million golden perch and Murray cod each, around 300,000 silver perch, Australian bass and estuary perch. And we're also working on those threatened species as well. And just to give this some perspective, 6.6 uh, .6 million native fish. So if you look back 15 years ago, the number of fish we were stocking in the state was around about 600,000 fish across the board. Uh, if we go back 10 years ago, we were putting in just over 2 million fish and we thought we were doing pretty well. And five years ago, around about 2.5 million native fish. And this is where we are today. So we're in a really good spot right now. Um, we've got more scope to use this incredible management tool to get those fish out there. And it's really making a big difference. The good news is we're not stopping there. Next year we go to an even bigger record of 10 million fish in total and just over 8 million native fish right across the state. So it gives us tremendous scope to continue to recover our native fisheries. It's not the only tool though that we're using, it's just one of the suite of tools. And the next one I want to talk about is regulations. Sounds quite boring but it's actually really important. So, a regulation that you're probably all really aware of is the slot limit that we brought in for Murray Cod in late 2014. So 55 to 75 centimetres, um, it protects the small fish, it allows for some harvest in that window of 55 to 75. And then really importantly, it protects those big fish for the rest of their lives. And those big fish we know are the better breeders, they have more eggs, they, they're better parents and they really contribute back to that Murray Cod population. And the modelling, and I think the results are now showing that that's actually having a really big impact and putting more fish back in the water. In the lakes where our Murray Cod don't breed as much, it's providing more trophy fishing opportunities, as in that photo there for Lake Yildon. And this has been really well accepted by anglers. So a survey by VR Fish found that 84% of anglers were really supportive of slot limits and that's now up to over 90%. So clearly the community really get this and we want to look at slot limits for other species as well. It's not just Murray Cod that we've changed the regulations for. We've also looked at some other species to give them better protection, but also still allow some level of harvest, which is sustainable. So recently we've changed the bag limit for golden perch and reduced it from 10 fish per person per day to five fish. And we think that's really reasonable. We've brought blackfish down from five to two, and we've also given full protection to Macquarie perch in the Yarra, because we recognise those fish have really good genetics and we want to use them in captive breeding programs. So some more tweaks to these regulations, we think are really helping bring more native fish back to have scenes just like this. So we can tighten up on regulations. We've also looked at places where we can reduce the amount of regulations and provide more fishing opportunities. And a really good example of this is the year-round Murray Cod fisheries that we've now got. Um, this started for Lake Yildon where we did some science and we understood that in Lake Yildon there was very little natural recruitment, that mainly the fishery was sustained by stocking. And because of that, a closed season didn't really make sense. So we lifted the closed season and we made it year-round fishing. And it's been a huge success. Anglers are really enjoying it. They can get out there. It's a real boost to the regional towns. And the bit that I like is it shifts the fishing pressure from the river systems, particularly during the closed season, onto the lakes where we artificially maintain it through stocking. So it's really progressive fisheries management. And uh, I think it's really beneficial to build up those cod stocks and provide more fishing opportunities. We've just announced yesterday that we've now got year-round Murray cod fisheries in the Wimmera and the Millicent basins. And this was suggested by VR Fish. We consulted with anglers and really well supported. And similar out uh, in the Wimmera and the Millicent, um, low levels of natural recruitment. It's actually outside the range for Murray Cod and we stock it heavily for fishing purposes. So it makes sense you can go and fish for them. So now year round fishing in places like Rocklands, Taylor's Lake, uh, Belfield and Charlie Grark and um, some really good cod fisheries there already and some developing. So we think that's a really good thing. Again, it takes the pressure off the river systems where Murray Cod do breed. And we are keen to look at some other waters for 2022. 
but we do want to do some more science and understand the level of natural recruitment in places like Lake Epilock, Cairn Nilakuti, Lanakuri. Um, and when we've got that information, we'll share that with you all, with the community, and see what people think, and there might be more opportunities to provide more fishing, um, but also use these regulations to build our cod stocks and our native fish stocks. So regs is the second one. Really important for our, our native fish populations in Murray Cod is habitat. And Cam talked about it this morning. It's really the lifeblood of our fisheries. Um, every chance we get now, we want to restore river health. And our CMAs, our catchment management authorities who are here with us today, and they've got stands out there, they do a fantastic job. This is right in their wheelhouse to restore river health. Um, we're keen to partner with them at every opportunity. Recreational fishers are doing the same. There's fishing licence projects to reinstall habitat in places like the Little Murray, Box Creek, and we're also looking at Waranga Basin. It's currently with the Working Grants Group, and that's a beautiful uh, golden perch that was caught at Waranga during the week. Uh, increasingly, anglers are getting involved in these habitat restoration projects too, which is really good. Um, a little note I would say is, at the moment, I'd say the trout fishers are really leading the charge in this space. Terry George and the Australian Trout Foundation, we would love to see more native fishers get involved. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about this from Anthony later on today. So they're the big three, regs, stocking and habitat. And now I want to get onto the one percenters, and these are the extra things which are really having a benefit as well. So improved handling. There's a real desire from fishers to make sure we look after our Murray cod. Lots of anglers want to do this, and for a while there was a lot of debate on how best to do it. A little project which was led by Anthony, um, he worked with an aquatic vet with prominent uh, Murray Cod anglers, including John Cahill, who's our pin-up boy in the poster right there. He's here with us today. Um, they put together the Care for Cod program, which is basically a four-step plan on how best to handle Murray Cod so that you handle them correctly and they release with the best chance of survival. And that's been really well adopted by anglers, promoted heavily through stickers and posters and in tackle stores, through trolleys. Um, we've had uh, kids tattoos and it's, um, it's been spread through social media through groups like Murray Cod Fishing run by Sam Consolo and Bailey Thomas. They only put up photos of Murray Cod which are handled correctly. So this is really helping making sure those fish are going back and it's spreading to other species as well. Handling is making a big difference. Target environmental flows. So if we can target those flows um, to simulate the natural environment, this potentially could be one of our most valuable tools for our native fisheries. It can boost the productivity, it provides food, it stimulates them to spawn and to move. And a really good example is here in the Goulburn um, right through Shepparton, targeted flows in spring can stimulate those golden perch to spawn and their golden perch eggs right there. Um, so if these are done at the right time, um, really powerful for us and we strongly support the environmental flows that the Victorian environmental water holder use because huge tool for us to bring back our native fish. And there's a lot of work underway at the moment on threatened species. Um, so Macquarie perch and trout cod we are looking to breed up to 100,000 and stock 100,000 of these species this year from Snobs Creek. Um, we're looking for better ways to um, produce them. We want to do some captive breeding. Uh, and the fish that we've already stocked out, we're seeing um, through the monitoring from the Arthur Ryler Institute, these populations are surviving, they're growing, they're expanding, and they're actually breeding themselves. And those photos there are of a Macquarie perch and a pygmy perch that the Arthur Riley Institute research has found in the King River recently. So um, really encouraging signs. We want to bring these species back. There's work underway for catfish, for river blackfish, for pygmy perch, as I mentioned, and purple spotted gudgeon. Um, and they're important parts of the ecosystem, all of these species. Uh, and the large-bodied ones, Macquarie perch and trout cod in particular, we want to bring them back as angling species as well provide more opportunities for them. So lots of work underway. We've got Luke Pearce here with us today, who's a great partner from New South Wales Fisheries, and uh, lots of efforts there. And lastly, a little one around the edges that's been led by John Douglas, actually, is um, saving fish from irrigation channels. So as Gold Murray Water do their maintenance on the channel systems, 
Um, we've been getting in early and uh, electrofishing those fish, getting them out and putting them back into the river systems where they can breed and where they can be caught by anglers. And a lot of these fish are really big as well, so that's helping too. So we're all contributing these things, um, but anglers often ask, what else can they do? There's a few things underway right now um, that we would be interested in you providing some assistance with if you feel strongly about them. So inter-valley transfers are these large flows which go down the Goulburn River in summer at an unseasonal time for irrigation purposes. We have concerns that these are going to impact our native fisheries. Um, and there is a consultation underway. So if you feel strongly about that and you have concerns about these big flows which go down the rivers for irrigation downstream, um, put in a submission at Engage uh, Victoria there. And uh, we would like to see those big flows go down the channels and our river systems to be as natural as possible so they're really catered for our fish. Similarly, there's some work underway for access and appropriate camping on Crown land. If you feel strongly about this, please have your say at engage.vic.gov.au. And the other one is we're always keen on your feedback. So if you are out there and you're fishing and you catch some fish or you don't catch some fish, please let us know. You can uh, come and tell us, you can email us, you can tell us through social media, or even better, you can download our Go Fish Vic Angler Diary app and put it through the app, which is our tool to really monitor our fisheries. So to summarise, there's heaps of work underway to continue to improve our native fisheries and you guys are playing a really key role in this. Um, it's making a big difference and we're going to continue rebuilding our native fisheries. We want to create new fishing opportunities where we can. Um, we want to build those destination fisheries and you'll hear from Chris Rose about this in this session. Recover those threatened species and continue to build that wreck fishing licence. Um, the future for our native fisheries is really bright. We're on the incline, um, there's a native fish recovery, a revival underway, and all these things are contributing, so we want to keep it going. Um, at the VFA, we love native fish. Um, we're all avid fishers. There's been a bit of fishing around this weekend too, so we're really heavily invested in this space. If you have a suggestion or an idea or a comment, please come and tell us about it and we'd love to uh, hear your thoughts on what else we can do to continue to make fishing great in Victoria. And just before I finish, I also do want to acknowledge um, having a special guest with us today, Dr Stuart Rowland and his lovely wife, Lynn. Stu is a native fish legend and he's really led this uh, native fisheries revival, I suppose, across the basin through his research. Uh, he's got his book, The Cod Father, that's a really great read. And this is a photo uh, at the conference in 2016 of him with Harrow and Rod McKenzie. And uh, yeah, he's a legend. Please go and have a chat with him and uh, learn a little bit about how far we've come and uh, where we're going to go to next. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for listening. Cheers.